How's it hanging, Freedom Partners? My name's Voya, and welcome to the new series I like to call Freedom Flash Fridays, where I will be showing you all cheap or free ways that you can improve your photo, video, or editing for both. Whether you don't have the experience or even the funds to afford expensive photo or video programs, I'm here to help. I'll show you free or cheap programs that can help you improve the look of your channel, and not only that, I'll give tips along the way that you can just use in general with any programs. Today we're taking a look at an online photo editor called Photopea. Now I hadn't heard of this until a few weeks ago, but I can already highly suggest it. I've been playing around with it and it's pretty much just Photoshop online, it provides all the tools you need and is ideal for thumbnail creators, or banner creators, or just channel art creators in general, but you can't quite afford that steep price of Photoshop. In this episode, I'll be showing off the tools of the program and we'll be preparing for the next episode of Freedom Flash Fridays, where we'll talk about making a thumbnail and putting all those tools together. So let's go! And here we are in Photopea. Now to get here, all you have to do is go to photopea.com and you will get this beautiful page right on your web browser, no downloading anything. So to start a new project, you all you have to do is go to New Project. It's just that simple, you click on that, and you're given all these different things on what you're gonna do, whether you're doing something social, like a Facebook page cover, or a photo, like you're printing something out. What we want is this. HD, which is 1280 by 720, and personally, I think you should set the resolution to 200, but that's just me. I also think that the transparency or the background should be put on transparent, just so that you don't have to worry about an extra white layer. So once you have that figured out, then you're gonna go to create, and you'll have this. When you see a background that is like this with the white and gray boxes, that means that it's transparent. So the first tool that I'm gonna show you all is the gradient tool, which is right here. So, how this works is here you have your two different colors. You can go, choose your color, let's go bright pink, and here let's go, let's go red. So here we have purple and red, right there. All you have to do is go to gradient tool, click, and drag on your screen. You can do that, or if you hold shift, it'll automatically put it at an angle, like that. Do you see that it's snapping to an angle, or if you let go of shift, you can move it freely like that. And then when you let go, you have a gradient transitioning from the first color, here where you started purple, to the secondary color, which is red. Or if you start here and go here, from purple to red. And depending on the length of the line, it'll change the gradient. So the longer, the better the blend, the shorter, the less the blend. So it'll just be a solid line, or it'll form into the other. The next is the text tool, which is right here. Now this is easy. A lot of people will be like, oh, let's draw a text box, but actually I don't like doing that. I do not like to draw text boxes. I prefer just taking the text tool and clicking. And you'll see it'll put that there, and then you can type away whatever you want, and there you go. You can have that if you have auto uh, transform tools on, then you can resize it and it'll automatically scale the font to the size that you want. So you can type away whatever you want. And there is your text. Now, you may be thinking, okay, this, this text is good, but it's a little bland, don't you think, Voya? And I'll say yes, the text is a little bland. So let me show you another tool that you'll be using when making thumbnails. And that is not actually over here, but instead it's down here with these buttons. Here you have effects or layer style. You click that and you'll get all these beautiful different options. You'll have things bevel and emboss, stroke, and so on. The things we're gonna take a look at first are stroke. As you can see, it adds an outline to the text. You can change the size of it, super thick, super not thick. You can move it inside, center, whatever you want. Most people use outside just since it adds an outside stroke to it. And the second one that you'll want to use mainly is a drop shadow, which is here. You can change the angle. As you can see, the shadow is moving around. The opacity, which will make it darker or not darker. 
the distance, which moves it closer or farther away from the text, and then the size, which is, of course, the size. And then you have noise, which is pixelation of it. Basically, makes it look staticky. If you've seen TV static, that's what noise is. Then, of course, there's the paintbrush tool, which is simple. You paint. It's a paintbrush tool. You can change the size here, size, hardness, which is the opacity of it, so you, as you can see there's this sort of glow look on the end compared to when the hardness is full, and you just have that. You can also change the shape all on here. You could do, let's see, what do they have on here? This one, which looks more like a paintbrush. Just doing that. Let's switch to red so you can see some more. Like that. And then here, you have the eraser. And of course, what does an eraser do? It erases. So you erase. You can just erase everything. Just like that. It's exact same. The opacity, the flow, the size, the hardness. All the same as the brush, just with erasing it. Now you may be asking, that that's all nice. I, I love drawing and I love erasing things, but... I have some art that I want to use on my thumbnail or my channel art, and I say, that's great. All you have to do is take your art from your thumbnail, your folder, wherever it is, and drag it on over, let go, and there it is. There's your beautiful art, or in our case, our beautiful Nold. Now what if the picture you have is some sort of background that you want to blur out a bit? In this case, we want to blur out Nold a bit. He's a little too... He's a little too not blurred out for us. Well, that's easy to do too. All you have to do is go up here to filter, go down to blur, and the one that I like to choose is Gaussian blur, in which you'll get this little menu here, and you can make it ultra blurry to the point of no return, or just a little fuzzy so that you can still see what it is, but it's not the focus. So you can do that, and then if you made your text visible, then you can see the text much easier than you could if Nold was just like that. As you can see, what do your eyes tend to go to first? Nold. And it's kind of hard to look at the text. But if you blur it, the text is clearly the focus that you want people to look at. This is important when making a thumbnail. And lastly, the all-important thing of saving your art. How do you do that? Well, just like saving anything like you're using Word or whatever program, you just have to go to File, Export As, and then you save as your options. I save as a PNG just since that's what I'm used to, so you just click that. And then you have your quality, you want 100 of course, you want everything here to be the same. Then you just press Save, and it downloaded your art. And there you have it, now you'll know what you'll need to use when making channel art, banners, thumbnails, the works. Now, be sure to tune in next Friday where I put all these tools together to make an actual thumbnail and to give tips on what your thumbnails should have. Thank you all for watching. My name is Voya. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Freedom Flash Fridays, and I will see you all in the next episode. Whoosh!